morning. It's time to uh, begin this morning. Uh, would you please uh, get a song books? Uh, they're underneath the uh, chairs or on top of the table and turn to number 96. Number 96. Would you please stand? are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite majesty enthroned above and I stand I stand in awe of you I stand I stand in awe of you holy God to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. You may be seated. I'm going to take and uh, read from James chapter 5, and starting with verse 15. James chapter 5, starting with verse uh, 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up, and it shall have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed. The effect, uh, effect, uh, prayer, uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I just thought about the idea of prayer, especially during the times that we're facing you know, there's a lot of confusion out there on what to do, what not to do. And we are ordered to come together upon the first day of the week as, as a congregation, and we're trying to do that as well. And it, it definitely has its challenges. But we should all take, take these times and, and pray for one another as we go through these things. It's kind of an unknown territory in a lot of ways. Um, you know, sometimes we don't know what to do. But one thing that we can be uh, assured of is that uh, uh, God is with us. He is faithful to us. We are, we, as long as we are faithful to him, he will be always be there for us as, uh, as his elect. So, you know, as we take and, and worship God this morning, you know, we should definitely take in consideration those blessings that we have in him and how fortunate we are to be Christians, uh, whether it's good times or bad times, that we can be assured of the hope of salvation. Let us uh, pray as we begin our worship. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, all the things that you do for us, Father. Help us during these times and as we take and, and, and uh, live uh, during these moments that of crisis, Father, that uh, we know that you're with us, Father, but help us take and Try to make the, the wise decisions in our daily life. Father, we ask that you help us to give us the strength to always look towards your word for guidance and always look to you for the answers. Father, help us as a congregation as we take and come together. Help us to take and provide for one another and care for one another as a church should. Father, we're about ready to enter our worship service. We hope this morning it'll be pleasing to you, and we know that you are here amongst us right now. And Father, we thank you so much for that comfort. And this is our prayer in Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Our next song will be number 15, number 1-5. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days. Our song before the Lord's Supper will be number 577. Number 577. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord, we bow down, and we worship you, Lord. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. You are King of creation and King of my life, King of the land and the sea. You were king of the heavens before there was time, and king of all kings you will be. We bow down, and we crown you the king. We bow down, and we crown you the king. We bow down, and we crown you the king. King of all kings you will be. Even with all the hysteria that's going on in, in the world today, it's not just in the United States, it isn't it good to be a Christian? To know that Jesus went to the cross and died for us, gave his life, shed his blood so that we might have our sins forgiven. It's good to be a Christian this morning. We ask you uh, at this time that uh, we bow our heads and we'll give thanks for the bread which represents Jesus' body. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, pray to you at this time. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us, especially, Father, that you gave Jesus upon the cross 
that we might have a hope of heaven and for, a forgiveness of sins and a hope of heaven. We realize without Jesus' sacrifice, Father, that we would be on this earth doomed forever. We pray, Father, that you will help us as we partake of these, that we will show reverence towards you, showing that we truly, uh, truly love you and we honor you and that we remember that the great sacrifice was for us and the great debt that we owe because of it. We ask you to be with each one for the, as we partake of it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow our heads again real quick to the vine. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, approach your throne again, thanking you for this fruit of the vine that rep represents the blood that Jesus shed upon the cross. Uh, we uh, love you, Father. We thank you for that great sacrifice. We realize the pain that must have gone through you, uh, that you must have had seeing your son die and suffer in such a way. We <clears throat> pray that you'll be with us as, at this time. In Jesus' name, amen.
separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, at this time we have the opportunity to give back as we've been prospered. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful for another day of life. We're thankful for the good weather this morning and the opportunity to come together and to worship you. And at this time, the opportunity to give back as we've been prospered by you. We know that all things come from you, that we would have nothing without you. And we hope that we, when we do give back, we give back with a cheerful heart and that the money will be used to spread your word in the community and the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand for number 957? Number 957. This will be the song before the lesson. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just stop in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You may be seated. Our invitation song will be number 639. Number 639. Scripture reading this morning will be from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. 
Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. The scripture reads, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Good morning. It's good to be here with all of you this morning on this, the first day of the week, to worship our, our God. With everything that's going on, it is an encouragement and very lifting to me to be here with you all this morning to worship. A study completed at Yale in 2014 using 128 men ages 18 to 32, researchers had men partake in mock negotiations. This study shows that they were dressed, what they would say, very casually in like sweatpants, plastic sandals, and a t-shirt, averaged theoretically around $680,000 worth of growth, gross those who were dressed in business suits with ties and, you know, the full-on suit averaged a theoretical gross profit of $2.1 million. And those who were dressed more neutrally averaged $1.5 million. The study shows definitively that how we dress matters. The way that we dress affects us physically, mentally. Those who were dressed in business suits were more courageous, more firm in their eyes, not willing to back down. They were confident within themselves and their ability pushed further towards their goal, striving to get the things that they wanted to achieve. They achieved what they wanted, and the study shows that they did it very well, uh, averaging $2.1 million worth of theoretical um, gross. I bring all this up to say that how we dress does matter, and that's what I want to discuss this morning is the way that we dress. I'm not talking about modesty or the way that we dress physically as far as our clothes that we wear. I'm not going to spend the next 30 minutes telling you that you need to go out and buy yourself a suit and a nice pair of red shoes like mine. What I am going to talk about though this morning is our spiritual. How are we Galatians chapter 3, Timmy just read for us this morning, Galatians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 6, it reads, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Note what Paul says here in verse 27. He says, For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. I rather like the way the New American Standard translation reads. It says, For all of you that were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. This word that's translated put on means to put on, dress, or clothe oneself with a garment. So I ask you this morning, are you clothed in Christ? Have you put on your spiritual garments? To be clothed in Christ, you must be baptized. Read it very plainly here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Paul writes, for all of you who have been baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. As Christians, people should see Christ in us. So I ask, do people see Christ in you? Do they know that you are clothed with spiritual garments? Do they know that you are a Christian by your faith, an, an active faith, one that is living, one that shows where your priorities are. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 9, it references Christians 
as those of the way. Interesting when we read passages in scripture like this, where they reference Christians, early disciples in the first century church, as those of the way. See, first century Christians didn't go around and announce to everybody that they were Christian. They didn't have to tell someone, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower, disciple of Christ, the Son of God. of the way. They knew because they looked a certain way. They behaved a certain way. They thought a certain way. People knew them by their actions. They knew that they were of that one way. In Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 Jesus says you are the of the world set on a hill cannot be hidden. He says, let your good works shine as a light so that others may see them and glorify the Father in heaven. Are you clothed in Christ? Are you clothed in light? Are you clothed in such a way with spiritual garments people know you are a Christian. Are you here this morning and you're not clothed with Christ? Maybe you haven't yet been obedient to the gospel plan of salvation. Not confessed. You don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Maybe you do, but you haven't repented of your sins. Maybe you've repented, but you haven't Savior. You haven't been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. You haven't done those things in Christ, and you're not clothed in light. You're clothed in darkness. But maybe you have done those things. Brothers and sisters, we can hide our spiritual garments. We can be clothed in Christ and then clothe ourselves with darkness on top of that. We need to be living and behaving and thinking and acting and looking in such a way that people know that we are clothed with Christ. That we wear spiritual garments, not physical ones. See, how we dress, it matters. It affects us mentally and physically. It affects the way that one achieves their goals. As Christians, we all have the goal to make it to heaven. You want to make it to heaven, put on your spiritual garments. Are you clothed in Christ? And if you are clothed in Christ, then I ask you, are you ready for the battle? Are you dressed for battle? Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, we begin with verse 9, I mean verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh, but against principalities, against powers, against the of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, using the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the 
Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with and supplication for all the Paul tells these Ephesian Christians to put on the armor of God, to dress for the battle. He says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavens. In studying this, looking at it, breaking it down, looking at it word for word, seeing exactly what Paul is trying to say, looking at the sense of the words that he's using, how they're being used, it helped me to understand to the, a fuller extent what Paul is saying here. And I would like to read these verses again for you with those definitions, those senses put in there. Beginning again with verse 13, it says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, the equipment of a soldier, to be sufficient to meet the task of opposing the morally wrong, and having done all to stand face with courage, being fastened securely for labor with truth having been clothed with the breastplate of satisfaction to God's moral requirements and having bound your feet with preparedness of action in the good news that brings harmonious relations and freedom from dispute. Above taking the shield of trust in Jesus, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, which is your pre- danger of judgment and the spirit which is the word of God as Paul said we are fighting a spiritual warfare a spiritual battle and as such we need to be wearing the armor of God the equipment of a soldier in the Lord's army equipment that makes us sufficient to be able to meet the task at hand, the task of opposing sin. He says, having done all to withstand, face with courage. Face with courage, not fear. Be ready, be strong and courageous. And giving an answer. Having, being fastened securely for labor with truth. Are you working with the truth? Are you spreading it around? He says, having with the breastplate of satisfaction to God's moral requirements. Are you living faithfully? Not just meeting the first requirements for salvation. Not just meeting that first requirement for justification, for righteousness. But a continual, active, living faith. One that meets the satisfaction of God's law and his word and will for mankind. Bound your feet with preparedness and action in the good news that brings harmonious relations and freedom from disputes. Are you prepared to spread the gospel? Are you ready to tell people about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If you're not, I would suggest you do like Paul says and bind your feet with preparedness of action in the good news. 
he says, above all, taking the shield of trust in Jesus, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the one. We are in an uncertain time right now. We don't know what's going to take place in the coming days. But it doesn't matter. No matter what happens, what come what may, have trust in Jesus will achieve the victory. We need to hold up our shield of trust. He says, take the helmet of salvation. When we first become Christians, we receive that, that helmet. We're clothed with Christ. We've been given salvation, redemption from... But just as we can take and cover our Christly garments, our spiritual garments, just as we can take and hide our light, we can also take the helmet off, set it down, and walk away from it. No one can take it from you, but we can set it aside ourselves. So make sure you're wearing the helmet of salvation. Make sure that you have secured your spot in heaven by living faithfully to God. Finally, he says, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, are you ready for the battle? Are you dressed in the armor of God? And do you have your sword? Do you know how to use it? Are you familiar with it? Are you ready to take it out, having it sharp, prepared to cut? I think a lot of times, we take our sword, we take this God-breathed, inspired truth, and we set it down, and we walk away from it. Make sure you have your sword at the ready. Make sure you know it, you're familiar with it, and you can use it. Because if you're not, know how to use it, it's not doing you one lick of good. You can have this Bible, you can have it out, you can carry it, you can read it every day, but if you're not actually knowing it and living it, it's not doing you any good. How you dress matters. How we dress matters. We need to be clothed with Christ. We need to be wearing the whole armor of God. And finally, we need to be ready to be clothed with immortality. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. going to read verse 1 through 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, because we want to be further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit to guarantee 
So we are always confident, knowing that while we were at home, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known to your consciences. Paul here, he talks about this, this body, this dwelling of the Spirit being taken away, that we can be further clothed with life further clothed with immortality. And he says, for all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. May receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Scriptures are very plain. There's going to come a day. There's going to be a day where we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged for the things that we've done in this life, whether they are good or they are bad. And based upon that judgment, we will receive one of two ends. Either we will receive life and rest and an eternal presence with God in heaven or we will receive punishment and eternal fire in hell. There's only one of two roads that can be taken and everyone is going to be judged so I ask you, are you ready to be clothed with immortality? See, it's either eternal rest or eternal punishment, but immortality nonetheless. <coughs> are you ready to be clothed with immortality? You need to ask yourselves these questions every day. Am I clothed with Christ? People know I'm a Christian, or do I have to tell them that I'm one who is a follower of the way? Does my light shine through the darkness, or do I blend in with Wearing the entire armor of God, fully equipped to be sufficient to meet the task at hand? Am I laboring truth? Or am I prepared to take action in the spreading of the good news? wearing the helmet of salvation? Am I holding up the shield of trust in Jesus Christ? Am I ready to be clothed with immortality? And with what immortality will I be clothed?
you're here this morning and you're not yet a Christian, is no. No, I am not clothed in Christ. I'm not wearing the armor of God. I'm not ready to spread the good news. I'm not holding up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I haven't fully placed my trust in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I am not ready to be clothed with immortality. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, why not? You can be clothed with Christ. You can be clothed and prepared for the battle at hand by believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came, he lived, he died, he was buried, raised on the third day and has ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of God as both king and priest over his kingdom and his one church. You can repent of your sins. You can confess Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. And you can be baptized, meaning fully immersed in water for the remission of your sins. And you can be clothed in Christ, raised up to be a new creature, to walk in newness of life, ready to begin the pathway to immortality. Maybe you're here and you've done that, but you've since covered your Christly garments, you've since covered your spiritual garments. You're not shining your light. You're not wearing the full armor of God. You don't have your feet bound and ready with the preparedness of spreading the good news. You don't have your sword at the ready, sharpened, knowing it, being able to use it. And you're not really clothed for immortality like you should be. You have an opportunity this morning as well to make things right, come forward, repent, and to again shine that light to show that you are one who is of the way. Maybe you're here and you're a Christian and you are living faithfully. You are God. Your sword is at the ready. You're laboring with truth. You're looking to the day that you'll be clothed with immortality, no longer burdened with this physical life. Remain encouraged and continue down the path that you're on. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed the rest of this day. So in this time of doubt, this time of confusion and uncertainty, keep your focus and your trust in Jesus, the one who has promised you victory. If you're here this morning and you have a need, Won't you come as we stand and sing?
plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they truly believe, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it, strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them, tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. You may be seated. We'll now be led in our closing prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you each and every day that we're able to, to worship you, whether from home or preferably from your house. We want to thank you for Dylan's uh, lesson today. I think we can all take a lesson each and every day for this. We pray that we're able to take this with us to serve you, to love you, and to spread the good news. I know that we're going through bad times now, but nothing compares to what you went through for us. You will take us through this like you've taken us through so many other bad times. We just have to pray to you, love you, and serve you, as Dylan uh, taught us this morning. We thank you each and every day for the blessings you give us. We pray for the shut-ins, the people that are, were able to come today, we pray that you instill in their hearts the love and care that you have for us and that uh, we can also uh, call them, talk to them, and just remember that we're a very social people and we talk a lot. We could use that to uh, call people, to find out what people are doing. It's amazing that type of communication, how it can help and keep people show you're loving and caring. Take us away to our home today and pray you watch over us each and every day as we know you will and that we serve you, that we pray, pray to you each and every day to love you, read your word, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' precious name. Amen. get quick here um, just a few things uh, uh, food pantry items that uh, I'm going to bring in some next Sunday would be uh, cereal beans of any kind um, another thing too is uh, uh, we'll be uh, utilizing Facebook's test message phone blast to uh, relay any informa uh, important information to the congregation um, if, we, if you're not getting the emails or Things, let us know. I mean, it just could be a simple change in the directory or something. Uh, I know um, of one already this morning that we're going to make an uh, add to. But, um, you know, it's very important right now, especially um, with this things going around, that, uh, you know, there possibly, if there's a statewide shutdown or anything like that, there'll be some changes made. And uh, me and Jim want to get that out to you uh, the best uh, possible way. Um, Ryan Kidd has been confirmed to have the virus. He is currently living in Colorado. His symptoms are mild, but be, being treated and monitored by, uh, his health, uh, by the health professionals. Um, one other thing is, as you pray, pray for my aunt, Barb. Uh, she is uh, going to be at Mercy uh, having her uh, major cancer surgery. Uh, to, was it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. So uh, keep her in your prayers. Um, one other thing, too, is if you can uh, help wipe down the tables after, after I'm done here, it would be appreciative. The more people we have, the faster it can be done. we got to collect the uh, communion cups and throw them away and that sort of thing. Um, Russ and Sandy, if you don't know, have been uh, 
quarantined for two weeks. Um, and there have been others who had contact with them. Uh, so they're not here as well. Um, it's unknown at this time whether they have uh, the virus or not, but uh, they have been told to stay in for well, probably another week now. It was this past week and then now another week. So uh, I um, just stood out of their porch yesterday to give them something, and Russ sounded horrible, and I guess Sandy's not doing good. He, she's even worse. So just keep them in your prayers. Um, I don't know exactly what they have, whether it's strep, whether it's this, that. I don't know. All I know is that they were told by the doctor, unless the temperature reaches 103, that they you know, just stay home. So that's all I can tell you. That's all I know. Um, uh, uh, this morning, you know, we did wor uh, record the worship. We're going to be doing that. All right. Um, if, in fact, uh, we're going to keep the doors open, folks. I mean, me and Jim are, are trying our best to make sure that the doors stay open on Sunday morning. Okay. Uh, if, in fact, for some reason or another, that we can't, uh, you know, uh, we're recording services. There's going to be somebody here to do something here for worship to record. Or you can go on um, Polishing the Pulpit. And what was that other website? What is it? GVNTV.org. GVNTV.org. They do have worship services as well. If we have a situation where we can't come together, uh, what has happened uh, so far is we made a bunch of deliveries to communion packs to the members. All right. Uh, so far, you know, there's only certain ones that I know of that, that are staying in. Uh, and uh, they're going to get this recording uh, this morning as well so they could take the Lord's Supper with us. Uh, we're doing our very best. Uh, that's why it's important uh, that you, you know, get the information through the email, Facebook or whatever. We want to make sure that you're informed on what's going on. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you want the communion pack, please tell me this morning. Uh, that way I can get it to you this week. Now, me and Jim have ordered, um, there's a factory uh, packet kit, a traveling kit that has, uh, it's sealed by factory and everything, has the bread and the communion. We have ordered that a while back, but it got lost in shipping. So we had to make our own and no different than what you guys received uh, this morning with the rubber gloves, you know, application and all that, you know, you know, uh, we did our best to make sure everything was clean. We put these pet kits together ourselves. Um, that's what we got available right now. Until those things come in, that's the best we can do. Uh, but please tell me if you need one. I have a couple back there already. I know I told like my sister, I'll give her one and JT and Matt, you'll get one. I do have a couple back there that, that can be handed out. If you want one, let me know, please. Um, also, uh, you, know, the, you know, me and Jim recommend that when we come together that we, you know, the families kind of keep their distance uh, from each other as far as sitting wise. I know it's a little bit, yeah, exactly. Uh, I forgot to announce that this morning with all the stuff that was going on, but we just want to, do what's recommended by the health department, okay? And, and, and when we come together, try to be as safe as we possibly can and other precautions that they recommend. So just keep that in mind. Uh, is there anything else? Yes. I just want to announce, did you watch the video? We are having a few technical problems and we're trying to get worked out. So if you hear a few things in there, just try to ignore them and then get those things done. And that is on the website, correct? It will be. Do you know about what time would that be up, you think? As soon as possible. Okay. Um, uh, I recommend you check it out just so you know, if you're not familiar with it or whatever, to check it out and see it and go through it so you know. Okay? Anything else? Okay. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday.